What's up guys, hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to be reviewing the patch notes for PC from a few days ago on August 31st for the latest update to Trove's main servers. This won't be a super in-depth video on everything since most of the stuff in the update I can't even afford to craft, but I'll do my best to explain everything important that's changed in the latest update to Trove. I'll be leaving timestamps in the description for different sections of the patch notes, so check those out if you want to skip around throughout the video. Feedback is really important for these types of videos, so after watching the video, let me know in the comments section if you'd like me to do anything differently in future Trove update videos. Also, if you enjoy the video, remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with any new Trove content that I post. With that all being said, it's time to get into the video. First things first, this update doesn't have anything too major in it, but it does have a decent amount of quality of life changes. Ironically, the smaller changes are way more impactful than the larger changes, since most of the larger changes actually kinda suck. Starting off with the main focus of this update, and ironically the most disappointing part of the update, the Depth Steppers. Depth Steppers are a new type of Delve Gateway that you can obtain in a few different ways that let you manually set the starting depth, typically between depth 23 to 110, however certain portals will have deeper minimum and maximum depths. Aside from the standard Depth Stepper, you can get other versions of the Depth Stepper that target specific biomes or bosses. The sad thing is, these don't even guarantee that you find the targeted biome or boss. On top of this, if you go through three tiers of floors, which I'd assume means nine floors, you will literally get a chat message saying that your increased chance is gone, meaning that the Death Stepper was completely useless. This is a huge problem considering how difficult these are to craft, but I'll get to that in a bit since I have some other stuff that I want to cover first. In these Death Stepper delves, you have a chance to find extra chests at the end that give you loot, but these are essentially the same thing as the normal delve chests, so they're not really that rewarding or interesting. There's also a new type of loot box that can be found in delves or obtained in a few other ways. Glowing crystalline caches give free range electrolytic crystals as well as rare depth stepper gateways, four new allies, one new mount, and two new banner styles. Now you may be asking, oh cool, what do the new cosmetics look like? I have no idea, because they didn't tell us what the new items were called, so unfortunately I can't show you any of them. Anyways, these caches can be obtained by opening shadowy soul vaults, 5 per vault, 6 times, resulting in 30 glowing crystalline caches every week after 18 delve floors. In addition to this, they can be obtained from the new weekly contests, which basically only rewards hyper endgame players. Also, you can get them by purchasing them from Shelbert the Crabkiss, found in subnautic passage delves, or you can get them rarely as drops from enemies in the subnautic passage delves. At the very least, we do have the guaranteed weekly drops, so I honestly don't really have a problem with these new caches. Now moving on to what I held off on talking about earlier, the difficulty of crafting these depth steppers and why they're awful. There are a few ways to obtain these new depth steppers, some ways more practical and reasonable than others. The first way to get depth steppers is to get them from the weekly shadowy soul vaults. One regular private depth stepper portal is obtained from the first six shadowy soul vaults per week, for a total of six private depth stepper portals each week. This is good, I'm okay with this. The next way to obtain them is what I mentioned earlier by opening the new glowing crystalline caches, which is also fine. The next ways, however, are where it gets really scummy. First off, you can buy private Death Steppers from Rokatan, the merchant on the west side of the hub world in the Delve area. Problem is, they're insanely expensive and cost 600 inert geodes for each Death Stepper, which is a ton of grinding. But this isn't even the worst of it. In addition to this, you can craft Depth Steppers in the Delve Workbench for an absurd crafting cost. Each Depth Stepper requires from 1 to 3 Uncommon Condensed Memories, 1 to 2 Rare Condensed Memories, and 2 to 4 Epic Condensed Memories, in addition to some other crafting materials, which is actually insane. The good news is that Epic Condensed Memories are now easier to get since you can deconstruct Depth Steppers to get an Epic Condensed Memory. However, the bad news is that the other condensed memories are still insanely difficult to just craft a single depth stepper. 
Condensed memories, if you aren't familiar with them, are obtained by loot collecting mementos, which are rare drops from bosses in delves. Also, every single boss gateway is available to craft, yet only two different biomes are available that rotate out each day. Now the really scummy part about this is that you can skip the grind if you're mastery rank 50 or higher, but it'll cost you credits. If you go to the Gateway Gladys NPC on the left side of the delve section of the hub world, this NPC sells Death Steppers for 50 to 150 credits per portal. In other words, not only are these portals very difficult to obtain and insanely grindy to craft, but they're also able to be purchased for the premium currency, which in my opinion seems like a pretty obvious cash grab. The reason why I have such a problem with these Death Steppers is that you can either buy it with real money, or spend a ton of time grinding for one single boss or biome portal, only to get ripped off by not even finding the boss at all. In addition to this, this should honestly just be a regular thing for regular portals. If they allowed you to select the depth or target boss on a normal delve portal, this update would have been insanely good, but instead we got a pretty clear cash grab that ends up being really grindy and can easily rip you off. With that all being said, however, the additional changes in this update are a saving grace because they're actually good. My favorite change is that the Neon Ninja now generates a shuriken whenever they shadow flip. This is an amazing change since you can build up shuriken charges while traveling from dungeon to dungeon, resulting in you already having full shuriken charge and a free route if you have the class gem by the time you get to the next dungeon. Another additional change that is pretty cool is the Bard class now has a PvP trophy. In other words, if you're grinding out some Bomber Royale and you happen to get a Bard trophy, you'll probably want to sell it to someone as soon as possible since prices are probably going to be higher on release for collectors. Lastly, there are two new weekly leaderboard contests for reaching the deepest public delve with a specific class that gets rotated each week. This doesn't really matter to early to mid game players, and honestly doesn't really matter too much to me either, but very end game players who participate in a lot of delves will probably enjoy these extra rewards. There are a few more additional changes, but they honestly weren't worth mentioning in my opinion, since there are very minor changes like changing typos and other stuff like that. All in all, a pretty disappointing update that had the potential to be a decent update, but it likely got ruined due to the attempt to monetize the entire update in a scummy way. Regardless, there are a few good changes in there, so this isn't entirely a bad update. That's it for this video, hopefully I covered everything that you guys wanted to know about the latest update to Trove. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date with any new video that I release in the future. If you have any questions about this update, or if you have suggestions on way to improve these patch notes videos, let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.